Okay, so it's about a week after um, that really short, hastily thrown together video about the black ink painting. Um, didn't really want to get a bunch of other people in the video and ask for permission, and get them stuttering and or just making noise in the background. So that one was really hasty, but uh, I wanted to get something up about it. We spent a uh, you know, good several hours painting. Everyone got really into it. Uh, Usually I see everyone making noise at bars, or going out and singing karaoke, and everyone was quiet and completely entranced in their painting. Uh, they, they really liked it. Um, and then, the, just after the video, we all went up to Mount Koya, and we hiked part of the traditional the pilgrimage trail on the way up, just about two kilometers, which was really nice through the forest. And then saw the massive, massive graveyard up there, which is famous for housing almost everyone who's famous in Japanese history, it seems like. Not yeah, everyone, but all sorts of warlords, daimyos, uh, certain Buddhist figures, and then these days lots of corporations as well. Uh, there's a, a shrine to the ants up near the entrance, as to all the ants that died for the profits of a company and that company makes pesticides. Um, there's another one for uh, Japanese astronauts, and then uh, I think Mitsubishi Motors has one, and Kirin Beer has one, all sorts of different graves. And a lot of them are really hard to read. Uh, as you get further back, and you need someone who knows a lot of Japanese who can tell you about it. Or there is an audio guide, but that really takes away from the the authentic feel of being up there. It's just a really peaceful place. Uh, anyways, that was really nice. And everyone was enthusiastic about it, um, tired afterwards, but they're all ready to do it again. And we're getting ready for another such trip, um, more cultural activities, you know, wandering from room to room at uh, the house we'll be going to. We'll be doing that next month. Um, it sounds like we're going to have a lot of people going again. Uh, that should be good. And the rest of this weekend, uh, this last weekend, was just people, you know, partying and hanging out. I uh, watched a rugby game. I joined in with that. And, and then the Sunday, it was a three-day weekend this weekend. The Sunday, everyone else went out and they went to a steel pan festival in Kobe, and then they went to a Mexican festival in Umeda, and, and then they all went out and drank and partied. And I was talking about it with uh, my friend Dave afterwards, and it's... You know, of course, it's for a reason. You know, everyone's got, there's some reason, some event. But when you think about it, there are reasons and events all the time. You got 23 people in the program in the city. When you put together all the birthdays, and then, you know, beginning of the semester, end of the semester, uh, major holidays, major sporting events, it's really rare to have a weekend where people don't have some reason to go out and party. And I made a list for them at the beginning of all the foreigner bars, um, and there's just there's just, there are quite a few, probably 20 or so foreigner bars in town. I think I missed a few on my list at the time. Um, but yeah, I was telling them, yeah, go do other things than go into foreigner bars. And I think, you know, just in the the 10 people I know around here, they must have gone to seven or 10, you know, maybe half of the, the major foreigner bars in town. Uh, just in this weekend, people are always there and. and the foreigner bars are fun, but they're not really cultural. Um, so yeah, it's the same, the same thing. These guys are much better about it than previous groups of jets I've seen. Um, they're not always just going to the bars. So I've met quite a few jets through the years that that's all they do, and they really don't experience Japan, which is sad. Um, but these guys, it's yeah, you know, it seemed like everyone was out partying for the whole weekend, um, and I did some, but not as much. Uh, just not a big partier. Anyways, um, speaking of partying and bars and things like that, something you don't notice as much if you go to the foreigner bars are all the amenities in certain Japanese bars and clubs, uh, restaurants. Maybe not so much clubs, but uh, bars, nice restaurants. If you go into the restaurant, of course, they'll have, you know, they may have pamphlets or flyers or a business card for the restaurant. And, you know, usual they'll have, you know, soap and paper towels. And then some of them you'll go and they'll have individually wrapped Q-tips um, in the back room. I 
So you, know, you can clean your ears if you need to, or use it to touch up your makeup. Excuse me. Um, a little bit of indigestion from eating dinner way too fast. I was really hungry. Um, but I've also seen in places, I've seen sometimes they'll have a bottle of mouthwash and a stack of paper cups. Um, I found that interesting, a little weird. Well, I've now seen it taken to the next level. Uh, this I found today. This is individually wrapped mouthwash. One single shot of mouthwash. And I can understand doing that maybe at the end of dinner. Um, but if you're going to a, a wine bar or any place that you should want to taste your food and taste drinks, I think mouthwash is not the option. I'm wondering if it's because of people getting sick in the bathroom and throwing up in places and you want, you know, it's a really formal bar, so excuse yourself if you feel ill, go throw up on your own, you know, rinse out your mouth and use the mouthwash and come out smelling fresh and clean and no one will ever know. Um, or maybe it's just to freshen up on your way out of the restaurant, I can understand that. Anyways, I found it entertaining. I'm going to throw this in my travel kit and give it a try sometime. I have to just try it now, but, yeah. Save it for travel. Anyways, that's it for today.